I think now more than ever, NATO's relevance is important. It's, it's a pillar to uh, continue to defend our common values through producing security, cooperating on security, granting stability, and helping stabilizing regions in the world where security is at stake. Uh, the role of NATO is even more important in a moment where we are approaching the post-2014 moment where there will be the withdrawal of the combating forces from Afghanistan, and we will have to deal with other potential or real crisis regions in the world. And in addition to that, we are living through difficult times of financial constraints in a moment where being European, being Italian, I can understand perfectly how important it is to avoid undermining the credibility of our alliance through horizontal cuts in budget defense and spending in the sector of defense, while, of course, the government are forced to cut their budget. So how to strike the right balance between producing security, not just consuming security at the expenses of the United States. This is bluntly what happened in the past. Was, uh, there is the risk to happen again. And on the other hand, taking into consideration that public opinions are not so, I would say, attract when one talks about uh, more security, increasing capabilities, uh, much more public spending for new technologies on defense. This is the strike balance that is absolutely necessary. Because uh, if I compare need for Europe for more integration, I cannot forget that NATO is and will remain the pillar number one for the transatlantic security. So there is the other aspect, how to get the division of labor between Europe, European Union, and NATO. For all these reasons, new challenges, striking the right balance between security and financial constraints, how to coordinate better than in the past between European Union and NATO, new geographic priorities, North Africa, Mediterranean, the arc of terror, ranging from Yemen through the Horn till Sahel. All these are reasons why I'm attracted. Do, do you think, though, that um, the problems that we've had in Afghanistan and Iraq really have led many Europeans to question the leadership that's been shown from the United States within NATO? And whether or not you know, what we're being asked to do is essentially support some kind of adventurism in that way, uh, taking us into unwinnable wars um, and footing the bill and being told all the time that we need to contribute to that, which wasn't of our making necessarily. Well, um, I think Afghanistan and Iraq are two different situations, but many lessons are to be learned because uh, uh, frankly speaking, now, if you look at the situation today in Iraq, we see uh, so many difficulties on stabilizing that country, so many bloody uh, uh, clashes, not only between Sunni and Shias, but within Sunni communities, that, frankly speaking, is not the responsibility of NATO to take under control. But if you consider the perspective of Afghanistan after 2014, there are many reasons to be concerned, frankly speaking, particularly in the case where president of Afghanistan, the current one, and the next one will not sign the agreement to guarantee, I would say, training units instead of combating troops to stay and a limited number of troops to stay to guarantee security. In that case, we run the risk to give back the keys of the country to Taliban that have been fighting for 
10 years now. So leadership of United States is not, uh, I would say, put in doubt, but there is something that everyone should, should understand. America cannot be in the lead everywhere in the world because the multipolar system of the world of today made for America necessary to indicate priorities. And this is exactly why NATO is so important and European members of NATO, for example, in Mediterranean, should take the lead as NATO with America helping from behind. We cannot pretend that America is always in the lead, always providing us with the capabilities. We should be able to share capabilities to avoid the application as European members of NATO. I made the example of Mediterranean because, to me, a southern dimension of NATO is the future of NATO. Keeping very firm, of course, Article 5 and the eastern uh, protection and defense of members of NATO, this is absolutely granted, but nobody can uh, imagine that Mediterranean, North Africa, the southern dimension, is not the priority, I would say, number one in the near future of NATO. So Afghanistan, if we look at what's happening there and we look at the withdrawal now in, in 2014, we have the NATO summit also taking place here um, in September. And how do you see the future of Afghanistan and how do you see uh, continuing involvement in the development in humanitarian aid and so on? And um, can, you, can you see a stabilization? I mean, we're very concerned about some of the uh, discussions that are going on about uh, legal changes, uh, protection, human rights issues, uh, women's rights issues, and so on. And what can you see uh, happening there? Well, uh, f first of all, I, I would not consider failure as a possible option, because uh, otherwise we lost lives. Uh, UK lost lives, America lost a lot of lives. That's not possible even to think about living back Afghanistan in the hands of Taliban. Uh, what to do? Uh, the first is to try to avoid the nightmare scenario that President Karzai or his successor not, don't sign the agreement for the presence of foreign troops after 2014. We need a limited number, limited number of troops. And first of all, we need the presence of training forces, training like those that are now training police and military people, those that would be ready. And this is a good cooperation, I would see, between European Union and NATO, public administration and civil servants. This is an experience that Europe has. We have shown that experience in the Balkans. The Balkans was a success story. NATO and you working together and with the magnet of European accession, we transform the failed former Yugoslavia into a number of states. Some of them are members. Some of them will be members of you. In Afghanistan, we need stabilizing a country. Stabilizing means, for example, avoiding making the confusion between those Taliban tribes that reject reject the constitution and those that are likely to be engaged. They want to be engaged into the reconstruction. I make again the example of the province of Herat, where Italians are. We have been trying to engage some tribal group of, uh, of Talibans by offering to them a legal job. And we succeeded. There, there are some small companies of marble production in the region of Herat, where people, they were Talibans producing poppy, illegally, of course, replace the job with working in a marble production company. This is a small experience concerning not more than 100 people in the province of Herat that I know personally. But this is the example that should be repeated on a larger scale, offering opportunities to get legal jobs, this is another mistake. 
we, we decided to simply destroy poppy production, but not replacing poppy production with the legal agricultural production. Now we realize that, for example, producing saffron is much more producive for farmers than producing poppy. Because, uh, of course, the price of saffron is higher than the price of poppy. This is just another example. What is necessary to do? First is to sign the agreement. Secondly, to guarantee the presence of trainers, international trainers for Afghan forces. Three, helping smooth transition in the areas of Afghanistan that are still not safe because uh, it's a matter of fact, it's not uh, criticism. There are regions of Afghanistan that are still extremely dangerous. We have to guarantee transition. Number four, have a regional approach. Uh, I believe that, for example, taking the opportunity of the re-engagement of Iran recently, we should reconsider the coalition policy vis-a-vis -vis the two key regional players, Pakistan and Iran. We like or not, these are neighbors for hundreds and thousands of kilometers with Afghanistan. If we don't reach a regional agreement and these two partners become partners instead of reluctant neighbors, it's very difficult to succeed because one of the problems that everybody knowing Afghanistan knows is the porosity of the borders between Afghanistan and Pakistan. If we don't engage the local tribes in reconstructing security at the borders, we cannot succeed. All these elements are necessary, are not legal problems, are political problems.